Hello, I hope you can find where I am. I had to kill the other stream and start fresh. So I'm going to just do a couple little things while we wait and have you catch up to where is Deb now. In fact, I'm going to go to our site real quick and give you a little notification. So welcome back in. I hope you can see me. Thanks, Mark. I hope you can see me and okay. Wait a minute. Uh oh. Okay. Let me get this site shortcut. Patty found me. How uh, how uh, am I doing now? Is it more clear and less echoey? I'm hoping. But aren't you a smart thing finding me so fast? Okay, hold on a second here. I want to go on the site and let everybody know where I am. And let me put the shortcut down for them. All right. I had to start a new one. I could not figure out how to get back at all. But my, oh no, my internet just dropped back down again. I'm not sure what's going to happen, ladies. Okay. So far, so good? Okay. All right. Thank you, Mark. Hello. You can hear me fine. It is, I only have a dot and one little band. So... Ah. All right, I better show you what I've got to show you real quick because we might be losing it. In the meantime, we got a call from Duke Energy, our power company, saying, be prepared, there's going to be wind, have, strong winds and heavy rain. Oh, I don't like this. <laughs> mm. It's already windy out there. Wow. I called Mark to the back door and said, look at all the... the the branches and the um, the cute little, what are they called? The little oak acorns. There are acorns all over the back deck. So let me show you, if y'all don't mind. Yes, we better get our candles out, our lanterns out. Mark moved the camper forward because we already had a tree branch fall on it. Um about two weeks ago so he just got repairing that finished repairing that and so he said you know i'm gonna move it away from the tree <laughs> because you just lose branches that's what happens okay so first i'll start with the heads let me bring you in a little closer okay the first head i made <laughs> i tried remember i told you oh use one of the ace bandages it did not work good. It is too open a weave, but I'm not going to throw it away because I'm going to use it as a hobbit type witch from the forest and decorate her that way. But I got an ear on there, got some facial features, and I will come in and paint on her face. And I will try to make it, you know, full of wrinkles and craggy for a witch. Then my second thing I tried, I thought I'll try using my air dry clay. And they talked, I saw somebody uses these little spoons and puts the face on. How did I make the features? Good question. What I did is I used a long needle. I used matching thread. I filled it full of stuffing. And then I came in from behind. And let me show you here. Like the nose. I, I hide the stitches. But I, I came in from behind. But then I started like going, let me find a needle or a pen. Let me just show you with this. So I would come in this side, whoops, come in this side and come out on this other side, right, like that. And then when I pulled it tight and I would try to grab some of the stuffing, 
from the inside. Now, I've seen people do this pretty good, but I found this very hard to do. On this fabric, it wasn't as hard, but trying to get definitions right. So I saw, I saw online one woman who took and did some big, tried grabbing big things like for nose and eyes, and then took and put the pantyhose or something over it to soften the features. But you see how this is just such a big weave, but I think it's going to make, you know how people used to take apples and carve them into faces and then let them dry? So I, I think that this is going to look more like a hobbit witch lady. So then I took aluminum foil and crunched it into a hard ball. And took this and rolled it over the aluminum foil to make it as smooth as I could get it. And I thought, this is my big mistake. I've never made a face before out of polymer clay. I went big. I don't know why I do that. I just do everything big. But anyway, <laughs> here is the face. And Mark said... At first, he told me it looked like a little old man from a very foreign country or something like, or maybe somebody, a little character in the woods. And um, so I went back and the eyes protruded too much. So I had already baked it. So I went back and I got some polymer clay, the liquid polymer clay, and rubbed it on the forehead and then put some more clay so that see now that the eyes aren't sticking out farther than the forehead. I like the nose I did on here and the mouth is okay. Don't make your eyes so buggy like I did. What I did is I took a little round piece of clay and put it where each eye is and then put a little piece of clay and did the eyelids. But you have to really build up the cheeks and the rest of the face. I, I think it's ugly now, but I think it's going to be prettier once I paint it. <laughs> so then I said, okay, this didn't work. So forget your ace bandages unless you want something really craggy. So then I said, okay, well, let me try the pantyhose method. And this is what I got. I don't like this either. I tried doing I tried doing the features like this, making the lips and making the eyes and I cannot figure out how to make it look more realistic. And there are some people so check online, type in art doll soft sculpture faces and see what you can figure out but this is going to end up being some little like odd little thing but anyway I wanted you to know I did try so ah that's a good idea Marsha so anyway I am trying and but that's not the look I was going for so it would be a cute little old man maybe to go with my little woman hobbit, you know, these guys. <laughs> but I've seen people do better jobs, but I'm not sure what the trick is. So then I got very frustrated. And I don't think this is going to work. I got the spoon, and it said, with paper clay, do layers of clay. Because when it dries, it will crack. Well, I haven't even gotten close to putting a face on it, and it's already so heavy. It's, yeah, it's heavier than this. So that's not going to work. And with all that cracking, do I really want to spend t more time when that's what it does? Oh, I want you to laugh because this has been frustrating. Oh, my gosh. And this is why I told you I would do every step ahead of you so that I don't get you in trouble. So then I, th thinking that that white clay, that air dry clay was going to work, I tried my first attempt at making hands. Well, these are great for Barney Rubble. 
but they don't look like a woman's hands. But now, since the head's not working out, I don't have to worry. So then, after I had made this bigger doll, Mark said this was scary. He said this was scary. But I'm hoping with lots of hair and lots of makeup, it'll look better. So then I said, well, I've got to have hands for it. So here are the hands. They're a little better. They're a little bit better. But not yet where I want to be. Okay. But I'm getting better. So then I tried again. Now I want you to know that these are discolored, but I will be painting them. But this came out. I don't know why this one finger is. I must have spilled something on it. But these hands are much better. But you know, hands are always hard to do. So... I'm thinking so, Debbie. I am thinking so. And and I got frustrated. And Mark said, well, honey, everything doesn't have to be easy. And I said, it's supposed to be. <laughs> it's like, if I'm going to spend this time to do it, if I'm going to teach people, it better get easier. <laughs> but these hands got better. He said, honey, you have to practice. Everything takes practice. But once these are painted, I think you'll like these hands much better okay then I said okay I'm going to try one more time to do a polymer clay head so this time I was smart and I took and um I took and made a smaller aluminum foil crushed aluminum foil um head and what you do is you make it into an egg shape now, I promise, I, I mark this center and center up and down because your eyes are kind of halfway, you know, supposedly. But my face always goes up the piece. I don't get it. But anyway, this one, I think, came out a little better, but her nose is a little big. But anyway, the ears are okay. And... No, nah, but I kind of wanted her to be pretty. So, and the eyes are still a little buggy. So I tried building out the forehead, but the eyes, the nose is a little big. The eyes are still a little buggy. But I'm going with this one because I'm afraid if I try to make another one, I'm going to make myself so angry. <laughs> yeah, it's just, you know, I guess the things I like doing and keep going back is because I'm, you know, it's easy for me. This is not easy. And I thought I would do better at this. But my, my, my face has always come out looking a little odd. <laughs> and some of the people, when you go looking for art dolls and sculpted faces, oh my gosh, some of these people are so talented. But these are the only, these are the only uh, polymer clay faces I've ever tried. So now I'm going to try to be happy with it. And I have a feeling once these are painted and they have the doll hair on them, they're going to be fine looking. So it's going to be like me. If you could see what I look like before I put my makeup on, oh my gosh. <laughs> so I'm hoping it's going to be the same thing. So here we go. And if I had just endless time, then, you know, I would do them all again. But I do like my hands. I do think they're right pretty. So I'm getting there. And what, okay, so let me tell you, you know that with the polymer clay, I used aluminum foil, compacted real tight, Take something firm and roll it. Try to get it as smooth as possible because then what you're going to do is take some. Uh, oh, well, we'll see. I have a feeling y'all are going to do better than me. But um, make sure you really roll the aluminum foil smoothly because 
what you're going to do then is take an older or a color of polymer clay you have that's not as good as, like this is, um, what's it called? Kato. I think Kate, Donna Kato, I think was her name. This is the good clay. And then, you know, here's some transparent clay. You know, I, I've tried all kinds. Um, yeah, this is the Kato Poly Clay. I just love the texture. It takes a lot of work to soften it. But when it cooks, it is nice and hard. But you can get Sculpey Beige, Beige or Flesh. Then I took with one of them, and I added a little bit of pearl pink to it. But, and see, here's a piece that I had left over that was conditioned. And so, and I just, it's, I could run it, it would be a lot easier to run it through the pasta maker, but I didn't want to bring all that stuff upstairs. So I used this and just rolled it, fold it in half, rolled it, fold it in half, rolled it. Because I've had some of my clays for 20 years. So it's really good to condition them. All right, so now I've shown you, and I showed you the translucent because there is something if you wanted to add a little more color to your clay, make sure to add some translucent because that's what really helps it look more like real skin. So, so I worked, worked, worked on the faces. There's one more type of face that I want to show you. Let me see if I can find a good piece of muslin down here. And let me see. All right. One of the things that I'm going to be doing tomorrow, probably, is... Let me bring this down. I was noticing some of the sculpted faces. One thing I noticed that someone did is oops, they took the fabric. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and fold this in half. They took and put the seam up the face right up. That's a good idea, Marsha. That would be easy. <laughs> Um, but they took and did the face sideways. So, like this would be the side of the face, like this, okay? And this is, of course, the eyes, so... There's the eyes. Here is the nose. Here is the mouth. So they did it sideways. Now see, this still looks weird because I've got the forehead going back too much. But anyway, this, they do it sideways. And then you add a seam allowance. You cut it out and you sew it along there. And that way it gives you it gives you some of these shapes that then you can come in and try to then do the soft sculpture, okay? So I would I'm going to do it this way. I am going to tell you though, do your sewing at 1.4, do it nice and tiny, and get a matching thread to whatever the fabric you work with. Because you're going to put a lot of stress on it when you stuff it and when you um, turn it inside out. So, okay. So now after I got, after I fought with the faces and I, who knows, I might just try another one this weekend. I've got to give myself a break because it was hard work. <laughs> and I barely, I barely cleaned the kitchen. I barely did anything. I've been obsessed with it. So if you sent me emails, I'm so sorry. A Christmas doll does sound nice. So what I did then is I said, okay, I'm going to switch to making the doll bodies. And this is a classic little doll body. And all I did was draw it on a piece of muslin 
and then stitched it very tiny up. Oh, and look, my hands are different sizes. Be careful to draw the hands the same size. But anyway, and then here's one. And in all of these dolls, I have put armature in so that they can be flexible. That is reasonably simple, although I don't know how to connect the pieces to each other to make, you know, what you would do is you would do a straight piece for the body, have something for arms coming out here and having legs come down like this. And the problem is I would put the armature in here. And then by the time I did the stuffing, the armature kind of came undone. Like, the, you know, it's not, in, it's not in the same place. I can, let me say, I hope I can find it. I've got, I'm supposed to have pieces that connect to the legs in here. There they are. I felt them, but that's tricky. But anyway, you just draw the shape. And in the art doll that I'm doing, I wanted one that's, that has a bigger face because you do all the, you know, putting the makeup on and the hair, but a, a smaller, more lifesome, lissome body, you know, with like long, flowy legs and stuff. And then, so here is what I've already made. I have this whole one. This one is going to be like my exotic doll. This one is going to, and I think this one is going to be my, no, this one, this one's going to be my um, hobbit lady, I think. <laughs> and um, this one, maybe he'll end up being the old man. And then this one's going to be with this head right here, and I guess I haven't really done anything for this head yet, so I've got one more still to cut out, but I'm going to try to go ahead and make them. The, what I'm telling myself right now, and see when I made the legs and arms, I put a wire all the way down, because this way now I can pose them, and I wanted that to be exciting, so if you have any scrap wire wire that came out of a Chinese food box, anything, you can just stick it down in there. But I stuffed it first and then tried to stick the wire down. That stuffing becomes like concrete. I could not get the wire to go through it. So I had to pull the stuffing back out, put the wire in, and then stuff around the wire. So here are... I did these two legs and realized they're different size legs. So I brought down the correct one down here somewhere. And then here are two arms. And they both have the wire in them so they can, because I really wanted it to be poseable. So what that means is this doll, I guess, is going to be my, this one, is going to be for this head, I think. And then what I've got to do is take these wires and have Mark twist them together. And then I will push the arm just inside the shoulder part, although it'll be on this side. But And then what I'm going to do is sew the fingers, the image of the fingers, sew it by hand. I was going to try to use the machine, but to get it stuffed enough, it would be really hard to get it through the machine. So I'm going to take a sturdy. What I did is I started using flesh-colored or off-white hand quilting thread, which is nice and strong, or upholstery thread, and then just define the fingers. My thumb is not very long, but that is hard to try to make a thumb while you're sewing and then get stuffing down in it. So they'll be close to hands. But anyway, this to me is like baking a cake. The fun is in the icing. And that's what we're going to have when, let me find that other leg too. That's what we're going to have 
when we start doing the costuming. So the face makeup and the hair and the costuming, that to me is the most fun. This is just getting the basics done. But see, I've got the wire in this leg and I'll just try to find the wire in here and hook them up. If I can't get it to hook up right, I'll just sew it in place. And then I'll be able to move it down here, but maybe not there. But that is okay. And some of them, I might just put like a button here between the arm and the body so it can kind of move a little bit. But I'm still kind of working it out. If you need patterns, I can draw you some. But I really think you can just kind of sit down. The main thing to remember, put a seam for the shape of the foot. Okay? If you're going to have a shapely knee and thigh, make sure it's the, the seam is right down the knee and down the foot. If you want to do that soft sculpt, sculpted face, I watched, and I think the thing is to put a seam right down the middle. At first, I didn't want a seam down the middle, but that's the only way to be able to get. Now, when I did the Cabbage Patch dolls, you just had to do, like, indentation for the eyes, a cute little this for a nose, and just, you know, for the mouth. But now with these art dolls, you know, now, the other thing you can do, and I saw a lot of this, is just make a face shape so it's flat and then paint it to look like, you know, paint in here so it makes it look more three-dimensional. Have a shadow or this side down your nose, and that way you can just paint the face on. So those are things... These are some ideas. It's fun to try. And I haven't bought anything. I thought about going and buying doll fabric. Now, that's another thing. If you go and buy actual doll fabric that's made to stretch, you can probably do a better job of making the features. But um, I'm still, I'm not, I haven't given up. I'm going to try to use the muslin on a profile and see if I can make it look right. But it's tricky. <laughs> well, the, like I said, the one thing you could do, let me turn the camera back down for this one. All right. You can make them as easy as you want. Whoops. Hold on. Okay, so if you were a little nervous about making a sculpted doll, then just have two layers and just do an egg shape like this. Do an egg shape, okay? And... And I would leave a little space inside. But if you do an egg shape, then what you're going to do is you're going to do, you're going to paint the eyes. You're going to paint the delicate little nose. You're going to paint the mouth. And, and then just stitch. You know, cut it a quarter of an inch bigger all the way around, stitch with a nice fine stitch, and just paint them. That way, if you're not doing the sculpting, makes it much, much easier. Okay? So, there are types of dolls to make for each person's ability. You could even do a sculpy clay face, but not do all the features if you want. And some people just kind of make a little indentation for the nose. You know, maybe just one line on one side for the, for the, the bridge of the nose. And you can just, you know, take and make an indentation for the mouth. So, but, you know, I wanted to do perfect ears. I wanted to do... Um, Perfect nose. And actually, I do like the nose on this one. 
I thought that that, that was a relatively soft looking nose. But, but see, even with the lipstick on and the eye only partially painted, it's looking better. Put plenty of blush on the cheeks. Lots of hair. Lots of hair. <laughs> so, and I have decided that for my witchy poo, she's going to have nice gray hair that I'm going to stitch on. And it's even the yarn. Oh, I, I do have that yarn. Hold on. So, she's going to have really nice gray, wispy hair. And I'm going to try to make it just, you know. And don't forget, if you have, if you have it, I have some. Consider getting some, um, it's a liquid in a bottle called Fabric Stiffener. And you might have to get it from Joann's or Amazon, but they used to sell it at the grocery store. And I know that I bought mine because I wanted to make cheesecloth ghost for Halloween. Now, if you don't want to go out and buy fabric stiffener, you probably could make it by wetting down cornstarch or flour with water and dipping your fabric in and letting it dry in the shape you want it. So there's all kinds of ways. The only problem by doing the starch, pardon me for the hiccups, for doing the only problem with doing flour or cornstarch is you're going to get bugs that if you store it in the attic, you're probably going to get something to tries to eat it. In fact, I've been thinking, what do I do? I've got my three pumpkins completely covered and nice and firm. And if you want to make a really good step stem on your pumpkin, go with paper towels. Because once you dip it in the flour glue mixture, you can just mold it to whatever shape. So anyway, but I've got, I'll show you Sunday. I'll have them painted up. But I, today I got the final. They're all thick enough and firm enough and stuff. So anyway, but you can decide which way you want to make your doll. You can have them like this or you can do this. The, the different. Oh, gosh. I don't like when I get hiccups. But the difference here is you can make the feet come out front because you have to have that seam right down the center. And look at how tight my seam is. See how tiny those stitches are? Now, I have one doll right here. So I was going to show you a little bit. Are there any questions? There you go, Marcia. <laughs> and don't forget, too, yeah, I'm going to use this for that. But I have wool roving and all different colors. And if you really end up trying to make a doll and you'd like some wool, I have natural colored wool. I have dyed wool roving. I'll put it in an envelope and send it to you. So if you decide, that's great. Yarn's really good. I didn't want to get some of, oh, Angelina fibers. I'm also going to use some Angelina fibers in my one fancy doll so that she can have a spectacular outfit. And I've been looking. I've got scraps of velvet. I've got um, tulle. I've got organza. I've got satins, all kinds of snippets. I've got all kinds of little bits of different kinds of lace. I am going to go all out on the costuming part. That's going to be fun. And I'll probably do it by hand. Because to me, when you're doing something small like that, it's hard to do by machine. But if you're better on machine, I had a wonderful godmother named Barbara who used to make her daughter's Barbie clothes. Oh, my gosh. And I couldn't do that. I'm sorry. I couldn't do it. So, okay. I'm hoping they will. But I tell you what, I, I like to show you. What was hard for me, what works better for me, 
because that way you can kind of try to think, oops, this, I might have to get a new joint right here. It's starting to want to act up. All right. So here is, and I just took and drew this out with pencil, okay? Then what I did do, you can see a faint line. When it came time to cut it out, I laid it here and cut it out at one time so that I could be assured. Now, it, oh, I shouldn't have touched it. Okay. So I could be assured that it would be equal on each side. So then I took and I did the sewing. Look at those tiny stitches. Tiny, tiny stitches, okay? So then what I'm going to do now, the next, but you can see how easy this is. And you decide what shape you want to make your doll, what size, you know, that's all. But it's, you know, it's not that, this is not that hard. Now what I'm going to do for curved edges, I'm going to take some excess out right here where the ankle is. I'm going to take some of this excess fabric out. And like I said, sew it on a tiny, tiny little stitch. And Kim Hicks, I am so tickled to see you. So I was so worried because things, the show started out a little rough. But I want to make sure you know, I'm, I, I've been seeing some really great people again tonight. And Patty was here. Um, but then right here up in between the legs up there, give that a little nip. Any place you can cut off sharp edges, do it because it'll make it easier when it comes time to turn it inside out. All right. Now up here, trim in here, trim in here, any place like under the arm. I would, trim, I would do two little darts like that. And then up here between the fingers, cut right up there. Cut the sharp point off by the thumb. Cut a little bit off of that seam allowance. And I just cut a little V, you know. See that? And because you don't want to take away everything, but you've got here you go. Take this shoulder. Do not cut into the stitching. But just come here and make little nips right around that curve. And that way it will help you when it comes time to turn it inside out. All right. And one good thing is, I'm going to actually turn this inside out for you. But you are not going to have to iron this. In fact, you shouldn't. Okay, so you cut it inside out. One thing I did do is I left openings a little half an inch or inch openings on the side to help me get stuffing down in. This is what you sew. You've got your, your shape you have drawn. Then you've cut it out. Then you've stitched it. Okay, and now this is what you do to turn it inside out. I just saw this and I want to get that. And Look, beginning of this. Okay. Okay. Now, what you're going to do, the first thing you do to turn this inside out is you open up the bottom of this foot, the furthest point out in the foot, and you start tucking it in. Okay. Now, here's where the chopstick comes in handy. And you just start turning that foot inside out like this. And you get it up there nice and good. In fact, what I usually do is push the foot until it's coming out of the neck hole. Because then you know you won't have lost it. See like this? There's that foot. So pull that up, leave that there. Now come to the other foot, but you start the furthest point from where you're going to pull it inside out, and you start tucking it in like this. When you get that tuck started, I just put the stick against my tummy and start 
slipping the fabric up. Now I'm going to tell you this, since I've made so many and I've been doing it nonstop for four days, my fingers are getting sore, but if you just make one, you'll be fine. But I have decided that I wouldn't go into the doll making business for any amount of money. I'd much rather make a quilt for somebody. <laughs> That's my thing. This is a lot of hard work. Okay, so here we come. Here we come. All right, here we go. When I made the Cabbage Patch dolls for my daughters and my nephew, I was only 25 or 26. So, you know, I was a young thing then. That's like 40 years ago. <laughs> I also made them wood, wooden rocking horses. Ask me about sanding wood inside your bedroom at 2 in the morning because you didn't want to go outside with the kids inside asleep. And you thought, I can sand them and it won't make a mess. Oh, my gosh. By the time I looked up from what I was doing, there was sawdust all over my bedroom. So I had to quickly stop what I was doing, get the vacuum, and clean all that sawdust. I mean, it traveled in the air everywhere. I had to clean the room. About 4 o'clock in the morning, I got to bed, and the kids got me up before 8. So I tell you. <laughs> but you know what? Sometimes those can be the best memories. All right. Hold on just a second. Hold on. I'm having trouble with this hand. Now, one thing you could do is you could put a safety pin on it. And it's a big safety pin. But watch this. You can put a safety pin on it. And then push it. Try to use the safety pin to tuck the arm in. Let's see if this will work a little better. My fingers are getting just a wee bit sore. But, nah, that's not helping me much. Let me try it one more time. Oh, boy. But some of the things we do, huh? All right, so I'm just going to take this, just do little nips since it's smaller. This is what I was telling you, is get a high thread content content muslin but do not get a thick muslin because if you do you're going to have a mess of a time getting it to turn inside out come on so while i'm doing this i'll tell you i went to my internist yesterday for my semi-annual checkup and she told me i'm doing great i've lost weight i'm exercising daily and my blood pressure was perfect. And so I, I came home feeling so good. So today I got my blood work in. It's looking very good. And um, I also, to the, today I got my A1C. And last time I got my A1C, it was 7.2, which no, she wants me to stay in the sixes. And so I knew what to do to get it back down. I've been so careful with my diet and losing weight, and it was down to 6.7. So I'm quite tickled with myself. I just need to keep losing weight and keep exercising so I can take good care of that kidney. And uh, hopefully I can get my... my GFR kidney function up. My creatinine is great, so it's just the GFR that went down a, a point more than it should. Okay, I'm trying very hard, and I might have to skip this one, but let's see. My hands are getting sore. Too much work. I showed her how I use neoprene from coffee co koozies or drink can koozies to make my finger splint the finger that's trying to do that trigger finger thing she thought it was a grand idea so okay i've almost got this come on deb 
Let me cross your fingers. If not, I'll have to move on without this part. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Oh, come on. Like I told you, this is, not, you know, this, it takes a little bit of time, but you're not going to be on camera doing it. And if I weren't on camera, it would be a little easier, but okay. So you can make your doll be an entire one piece doll, or you can make your doll in sections like I already showed you. So I'm not going to be able to bring that arm out yet or not the way I want to but let's I want to show you with the rest of it what I do all right so now you take so I've got the two legs and one arm now you go in with your chopstick and you take and you flatten that seam right here oh thank you honey I want to be healthy and be here for a long time I love you guys so but it looks like things are, t things are turning the corner with me. And I had a good cardiologist visit, a good eye doctor visit. You know, if I'd known, if I'd really realized what it meant to grow old, I'd have taken so much better care of myself. <laughs> but see how you just push out along the seams and take your finger and finger press it. Do not iron it. Because you want it to look very natural. So you just, there's your seam. You just finger press it. Go along the back seam. Finger press it. So that's what you do. Now, today when I was stuffing this, I came up with a really cool idea. And I'll tell you about that. Because I was getting pretty darn tired. I didn't have any of this stuff stuffed and I was getting pretty tired of doing it. Just making sure you've got, so you don't want any folds. You want your seams to be flat and open. All right. And I might be able to do part of this inside out, but that might be too hard too. All right. So now you've got it opened up. And let me push this back up a little. You've got this opened up and you've done the finger pressing to make sure that seam, that it stays flat along that seam so you don't get folding. Then what you're going to do is you're going to come in here. I brought down some stuffing. Then here is my um, wire that I use to make this um, to stiff, the armature wire. And so I would cut this about next. These are my old scissors, don't worry. So there is my body armature. Now, you don't have to do the armature part. I just thought it'd be kind of cool. This is going to be the part. I forgot to bring my pliers down. So I apologize. I'm not going to be able to do the whole thing for you. But this armature wire is nice and soft. Just wish I'd brought my pliers. I, I guess I didn't think I'd be doing this. So here, to do the arms, I'm just going to wrap this wire around this way. And you know what I probably should do is use hot glue to keep it in place. Hi, Laura. I hope nobody else has snuck in and I didn't see, but you if you have some really good crimping pliers, you can try to crimp it. Um, use some kind of glue or hot glue to keep it in place because it will slide up and down. And then add an extra leg right here to this side. So... Just pretend that I've connected these very pretty. Then you have to put this in first. You have to slip it in, kind of fold it, slip it in, pull it out through the arms and the legs, and then you start stuffing it. And I, with one I was doing upstairs, I got so tired of trying to put it in such a narrow hole that I opened up the neck a bit and that 
really helped. So there we go. Now, the trick that I found, if any of you have the AppliQuick applicators, I was thinking because I, I was trying to put the stuffing in, you have to do it a little at a time. Because otherwise, uh, it is always great to see Laura. And, okay, so I was using this, trying to put the batting in. But sometimes I couldn't seem to hold on to it. And let me show you that. Okay, so you just take a little bit at a time. It, you would think you would use a whole bunch, but no, because it will like act like a drain clog it will stop and you won't be able to get it to go down into the foot. So what you do is you, getting it started going in the heads, the hard, the neck is the hard part. Okay. So now doing all the leg, the separate pieces was easy. Doing a whole body all together like this is a little harder. All right. So you're going to get it and try to push it down. Get it down in there, and the first place you go is the farthest point away. So I'm going to take this and just take a little bit of it. And see, I can even come in this way. And you're going to take a little bit of that at a time and get it going down the leg and into the foot. Now, if you don't want to do all of this, go buy a cheap Barbie doll. <laughs> And then just put make a great costume. <laughs> but I'm going to enjoy that I did this myself. All right. So see how my, my skewer keeps going on either side of it? So then I remembered this AppliQuick tool and thought, whoa. So <laughs> I got this tool. Now, you must be careful. It's sharp. You could tear your fabric so easily. So try not to have it going down against the fabric. Try to have it in the middle of the stuffing. And sometimes I'll push it up along the fabric just so I can go beyond some of that stuffing and get just a little hunk and push it. There it goes. See? Got that drain unstopped. <laughs> And then push it right into the foot. Make it nice and stiff. But but that tool is that that AppliQuick tool is inside that stuffing. Because if it was loose, trust me, it would end up going right through the fabric. But once I started using that, once I I use I like the wooden chopstick for putting it into the fabric because wood kind of tends to help grab it where the AppliQuick tool is so smooth but once you get it in whoops let me try it again once I get it in and it's just a matter of catching it just right and starting to push it in whoops almost there you know when it's, it's the best feeling in the world when it actually starts going in so Okay, come on. There we go. I'm getting it now. And if you just want that wood to kind of grab the fibers enough to actually push them in. So once I've got that in, and I've got a little bit bigger of a piece, but watch what I do with the AppliQuick tool. Now I think on one of these I might have, let me see. Yes, right here, I, I kind of came through the end by pushing it so hard, I just took and stitched it up. It's not a big deal. All right, are you ready? So I push the rest of that in, into the body cavity where there's plenty of space. All right, come on, get down in there. All right, here we go. So see, now it's right here. So then I go in with this guy. And don't buy an apple kick tool just to do that. If you want to, just take a sharp knife and kind of roughen that up. But what I'm going to do is take the apple kick tool, 
grab just a little bit of that stuffing and start shoving it down into the leg. Keeping it in, do not let it grab the edge of that fabric because it will tear it, I promise. So I'm just trying to push some of that stuffing down. But the neat thing is having that V in the AppleQuick tool really helps grab that polyester stuffing and push it right down in there. Let me see. You just have to make sure, please don't tear your fabric. Then you'd have to start all over again. <laughs> and if you weren't careful, I can just see you going right through the fabric. So now I have that piece down. Then, then you can come back up, grab another piece, and just do it little bits at a time. Because otherwise, you'll end up with some... Um, empty spots and you can't get to it anymore because like you'll have a, a soft spot right here but this will be so jam full you can't get any of it down into the foot okay so whoops I almost started to go through the fabric there so you have to really pay attention I have just a tiny more bit of stuffing so I'll go ahead and finish filling up the leg and you want it nice and full. Nice and full. So there you go. So you just do all of that. And then stitch up any kind of openings you might have left. And if this were ready. Since it's just this one leg. I can probably get it to go down. But when that, when that batting gets really tight, and I don't really want the wire next to the fabric. I don't want it to poke through. But I can always pull some more of that out. Put the metal in. Now, you don't have to put the metal in. Ah, there you go. I love it. Yeah, anything or just even, like I say, taking a sharp knife and cut a few notches in the end. You know, cut... Uh, Cut a few slits just to make it want to grab better. All right. And so it'll probably take every bit of this to do that little doll. All right. But hopefully y'all have as much of that stuff sitting around as I do. All right. So I think I've told you everything. When I come back next week, I hope to have their faces painted, their bodies painted. And at least the beginning of their costuming. because And when I say the beginning, because I want to embellish these guys. I want to have tiny little beads and little sequins and all of that. And the Hobbit ones, I'm going to go out and find little twigs or broom straw. And... Uh, you know, just use unusual things to decorate their costume. So that, to me, is going to be the fun, and that's where the art comes into it. All righty. So, and hopefully I'll have one more head, and I'm going to try it with the seam down the middle, see where I go. I'm going to make it with the muslin, and then try to cover it with a stocking. And I think the stocking will give it more realism and kind of smooth out some of my struggled, um, my struggled, struggled sculpting. And I tell you what, it was harder than I thought. So it was easy for a cabbage patch. You barely need anything. Anyway, y'all take such good care of yourself. Thank you for being here, joining me is oh i wanted to let you know betty middleton is fine and safe she said they went to stay somewhere out of the way they're oh they're in orlando but now it's flooded so then she's going to go back home to tampa because tampa got less damage oh my i am so sorry so take good care i'm going to make sure we go get the lanterns out and we have our cards for card games Make sure that my 
Nook Reader is charged so I can sit and read in the dark. So y'all take such good care. Take such good care. And I will see you Sunday, as long as we still have power. <laughs> Luckily, we're not on the coast. So by the time it crosses land, I'm hoping it loses a lot of power. But any of you in the way, please take good care of yourself. Don't take chances. Don't drive through water. Do not drive through water. All right, everybody. Take good care. Thank you. Thank you. Take good care of yourself. See you Sunday. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining me. Y'all are the best. Thank you. Bye-bye.